You're listening to Cave Over Digital, the podcast. Hola, I'm Calden Kamir, and welcome to my podcast. In this week's podcast, I'm going to be talking about the Yellow Ribbon Program Rehabilitation of Namatakula Villager, Aminoni Nasilasila. He played over 100 HSBC Sevens games for Fiji from 2014 until 2019, when his career was uh, interrupted by the fact that he was sentenced to eight years imprisonment by uh, High Court Judge Justice Daniel Gounder for the rape of a 24-year-old woman. It's a sad story, and uh, one which has uh, generated heated debate on social media and uh, around the Tanoas, all around Fiji and in homes like mine, uh, because of the fact that uh, last weekend, Nasila Sila played sevens rugby for the Warden Sevens team in the Fun Flavor Super Sevens series in Nandi. Both the Fiji Minister of Women, Rosie Akba, and the uh, Fiji Women's Crisis Center coordinator, Shamima Ali, voiced their very strong statements against Nasila Sila and the Fiji Corrections Service about him playing in that tournament. Among other things, Minister Akba said that uh, what the Fiji Correction Service did was shocking and a mockery of the justice system. Akba also said that uh, it was a very serious crime and as such privileges given to a serving prisoner convicted of such a heinous crime is just not on and it w sent the wrong message to the community. Akba went on to say that the ministry strongly condemns this and reiterated that any convicted person loses all benefits and freedoms to participate until they have served, fully served, their sentence. She said that in this case, Nasila Silla is still convicted, still serving a sentence, and that he should not have any further involvement in rugby until he has completely served his sentence. Fiji Women's Crisis Centre Coordinator Shami Mali said Nasila Silla is a convicted rapist and it is beyond belief that the Fiji Correction Service has allowed him to play in the warden's side. She stressed that this is sending out a terrible message to rapists. And Ali added, rape is a heinous crime, and a, once a person is convicted, they need to serve out their sentence, not be allowed to play rugby at their leisure. She further added that rape is one of the most underreported crimes in Fiji, which, which they believe only 5% of the total number of cases in the country are actually reported. Very sad statistic. And she added that 95% of survivors live with this um, in silence while the perpetrators walk free. Well, I'm sorry, but I, I, uh, I cannot fully agree. I agree totally with the ladies that rape is a heinous crime, but I also believe in justice and mercy. I have one daughter and four granddaughters, and I deeply appreciate the sensitivities and the uh, anger expressed by these women about this case. And I understand that the minister and Shamima Ali, who is a, a long time champion of women's rights in Fiji and a loud, respected voice for women and violence against women uh, in, in our country. But Am Amanoni Nasila Sila is not the first prisoner to play rugby for wardens. This practice goes back to the 1980s. As far as I can recall, when uh, a former Fiji center was playing club rugby after being convicted of rape. I also remember former National Sevens coach Ben Ryan uh, at the uh, Ovalau Pacific, Pacific Energy Ovalau Sevens in 2015. He took an interest in a warden's player there and uh, on further inquiry was told that the guy was a serving prisoner and so uh, Ben Ryan had to end his interest in hopefully picking him for Fiji. Then there was the rehabilitation of the notorious Ali Ferete Nimadere, also a criminal. I was uh, the general manager of Fiji Rugby League and we had an office in Cumming Street next door to uh, Procera Music Studio. And once a week, uh, Nimadere used to be brought in, in handcuffs, accompanied by a couple of uh, uh, prison wardens, to, um, to come and play his music, play the keyboards and sing and be recorded. And that was uh, way back, uh, you know, in Fiji in the early 90s. Um, a female prisoner more recently was able to pursue her interest in fashion design with Fiji Fashion Week, uh, going out of the prison compound to do this before she was released. 
And so it's not only males, but also females. And I remember once going to see uh, Commissioner of Prisons, Wally Smith, in his office at the prison compound here in Suva, in Walu Bay. And uh, there was a big tano of kava, and the, uh, and the kava was served to us all in the office by a serving prisoner uh, at that time. The point I want to make is, in the heat of the moment about this uh, case and the spotlight on Amanoni Nasila Sila, because of his high profile, that uh, we should be very careful not to throw the baby out with the water. Nasila Sila is not the first, I re reiterate again, not the first and only serving prisoner to be given this privilege, and I hope he isn't the last. The Fiji uh, uh, Correction Service Rehabilitation Program, the Yellow Ribbon Program, has been ongoing for decades um, and um, successfully helped so many prisoners to make it back into society. It's an ongoing, uh, thankless task which the, uh, the wardens and the staff carry out diligently with uh, the help of psychologists, qualified psychologists and doctors. And uh, in our society in Fiji, as you would appreciate, the stigma of, uh, of being uh, convicted is a, you know, can be overwhelming. And uh, I feel that all of the, uh, the uh, heightened awareness brought to this uh, case of Amanoni Nasila Sila by all the media coverage and on social media is, um, is uh, only reinforcing the stigma on, on, the, on the prisoners. The Yellow Ribbon Program, as it is known now, reports that less than 2% of prisoners who go through this, all prisoners go through the Yellow Ribbon Program, less than 2% reoffend and end up back in jail. And that's amazing for our country to think that they have such a high success rate and uh, prisoners who are rehabilitated under this program, um, like Amanoni Nasila Sila, end up not reoffending and, re and returning to jail. And it's uh, a lot of work. It's a very, very much uh, a lot of effort around and about the, uh, the prisoners, not inside the prison, but outside with their families, with the communities. And in some cases, the, uh, the Corrections uh, Unit of Fiji, Corrections Service of Fiji rather, help in uh, contacting the victims and uh, trying to help them out as well as they come to terms with uh, what has happened to them. So it's both sides of the coin. It's bigger than just Amanoni Nasila Sila. It involves hundreds of other prisoners, uh, also female as well, to help them get back into society. And that's my point today, that um, I think uh, too much attention, unwanted and unwarranted, has been brought against Amanoni Nasila Sila and because of his high profile. But he's just one of many prisoners who are undergoing this uh, ongoing process to help let them work their way back into society as easily as possible. As I said at the very beginning, it's all about justice and mercy. And justice has been served. He has been sentenced. He is locked up in prison. And uh, after two years serving now, he's out playing rugby as part of his program to uh, rehabilitate him back into society. And um, Amanoni Nasila Sila is just one of many, many prisoners who are going through this process. Remember, uh, the corrections and the whole uh, prison system in Fiji is a dumping ground for the human resource uh, that, you know, uh, fall foul of the law or end up, uh, you know, people like you and I who have made mistakes in their lives and for whatever reason, uh, incarcerated and, uh, and uh, held uh, in, in, in prisons in Fiji. But uh, one day they're going to come back out because at the end of the day, like you and me, they belong to the wider community, to our country. And uh, really what we should be uh, focusing on for them is that they can come back into society, be welcomed back and uh, help to rehabilitate and help to reintegrate so that they become um, useful, uh, contributing members of society. But by uh, stigmatizing them and wanting to throw away the key for the whole of their term, and only allow them out when they've served their term is uh, in the long term not going to do any good for any of us. And in fact, you'll find in that situation, which is a very old fashioned uh, way of uh, locking up prisoners and uh, the whole concept of, uh, you know, throwing the key away until and punishing them until it's uh, time to release them. You're only putting out into society a guy who knows nothing more than the four cells of his prison 
and the uh, imprisonment of his mind and his uh, ambition and his spiritual life. He's a, a dead man walking when he comes back out. And in the end, we pay a higher price for that, uh, that uh, poor treatment of a fellow human being. So I'm saying, and I really do believe, and I respect the, the two women, uh, Shamim Ali and the Minister of uh, Women, Rosie Akbar, I respect their views, I respect their anger. As I said, I have a daughter and four granddaughters, and this is a very emotional uh, subject and sensitive subject for me as well, um, because it is, um, it is something that you, know, you hope never ever comes across your family uh, member, any female or male member of your family, to be, uh, to be a victim of this crime. But uh, we all have to show mercy. Once the guy has been sentenced or the female uh, person has been convicted and sentenced, well, you, you uh, lock them up and you discipline them and you go through the whole process, which the uh, correction service in Fiji have been trained to do. And their qualified wardens who are working with these uh, prisoners go through this whole program with them. And uh, I've taken the trouble to uh, be briefed on it by them because I wanted to understand it better, but I've also witnessed it with my own eyes at uh, Namboro Corrections uh, uh, facility, where they have uh, set up a lot of the uh, yellow ribbon program for uh, serving prisoners to um, improve their skills, improve their uh, uh, feeling of self-worth, and so that when the time comes for them to be released, the whole program of uh, pre-release kicks into into play, the wardens visit their, their homes, talk to their families, the prisoners are allowed out for a day just to meet their family again and start to reintegrate and, uh, and with the village community or the family and so that when the time comes that whole uh, re-entering society after years of lockup in prison uh, is a smooth one, is a welcome one, is an emotional one and uh, that's how you help uh, these people get back into society and end up on the right side of the law. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's really all I wanted to say about this, just to help give it a different perspective, just to help uh, promote the Yellow Ribbon program more and give it more, um, more credit than I think it's been getting lately in the media. And to say that uh, you know, there's more than just one prisoner Abanoni Nasilasila undergoing the Yellow Ribbon program, and it's fair and it's transparent for all prisoners, not only him, but all prisoners are going through this program to help them re enter society. And so I ask you all to please support the Yellow Ribbon program um, um, walk, which will be on the 23rd of April this year. Um, they had 8,000 people walking with them last year to show your support for this very worthwhile program which uh, I hope uh, continues for many years to come and uh, positively impacts uh, the many prisoners in Fiji for many years to come. This is Calden Khmer for TeboVoRugby.com. Thank you very much. Digital, the podcast.